Let me know if you can see the slide. And we're gonna get started. If people come late, they come late. Can everybody see an orange? Actually, this is a nice fall color. Getting ready for fall here in New York. Orange slide. Wonderful. Welcome everyone. We're gonna get going here. People come late, they come late, but I wanna get started. It's a little bit after four. Today we're going to talk about shorting and why you should short and why I love to short. And if those of you that don't know me, my name is Melissa Armo and I own my own company called The Stock Swoosh. If you have questions after the webinar today, you can email me at melissathestockswoosh.com. I see some new faces, some old faces of those of you that have been following me for a bit. And of course, you know how to get in touch with me. So it's very interesting times that we live in right now. We got one week till Labor Day. One week, today's Monday. One week from now is Labor Day. And actually Friday is September 1st, if you can even believe it. We, and before you know it, it's gonna be the holidays like that. So this year has flown by in 2023. And today we're talking about shorting, but the year really in 2023 started out quite bullish. So if you bought the market, for example, the first day of the year, any of the QQQs or the SPY, you're up as of now even though we've fallen off this month of August. But I've shorted all year. And in fact, I've shorted ever since I started trading. And one of the reasons I prefer to short, and we're gonna talk about today, is because short moves happen fast. And also a lot of traders don't know how to short. They don't understand shorting, or they're not good at shorting. So I've made it my mission to actually get good at shorting so that I can get you know ahead of the game, so to speak, when stocks or the market falls. If you happen to be around, I will be on Fox News on Labor Day. I'm on Neil Cavuto's show with Charles Payne at 4 o'clock. Again, that's a week from now. And if you have any questions as we're going along, along today, you can email me afterwards or plop it in the room. If you don't know how to chat, you get down to two, individual user, type my name, and then you can write. So let's get right into it. So the first 30 minutes is really the most important time for me as a day trader or really even an options trader that's when i'm looking to get in trades and out of trades in and out between 9 30 and 10 a.m eastern time now say for example i take an option on a monday and i enter the trade at 9 30. i may be looking to get out of my my options trade the following day if it continues in my direction lower if i'm in a put for example because we're going to talk about shorts today so that first half an hour, that first period of the day is critical. Now, when I do day trains, I'm usually in and out in five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, very, very quick. So this time of the day is critical because you can get big moves, you can get momentum moves, and you can take trains and get an aggressive entry with a small stop. So I always get this question, and since I'm doing this lecture here today, whether you're here today because you wanna trade part-time or full-time, or you've never traded in your life before and you want to get into doing it, the fact is that you can make a living in the stock market. You absolutely can. Not a lot of people do because most people don't know what to, have, don't know what to do and they don't have a good system. So therefore, they make a little money, then they lose. Then they make a lot of money, then they lose a lot of money. Then they're down from where they even started or they're break even or they're up a little, down a little. I never really getting anywhere with it and wasting 20 30 years of their life. I've been, I've taught people that are older than me that have been trading longer than me that still don't have a good strategy or system. So you can make a living in the stock market, but without a good system, you'll never be able to make a dime. You might make some money some days, but lose it then the next or the next week or the next month. And so if the market starts to turn, which I don't know, I don't know if the market turns, like I said, we've been bullish since the beginning of 2023, where the market's in an uptrend, the market's bullish, you can't deny it. But if the market turns, whether it's fall of 2023, whether it's going into 2024, you need to be poised in order to learn how to short, to take advantage of the downward moves that we're gonna have in the market. Now, as far as 2024, again, there's different pundits out there that say different things. I'm gonna say what I think on Fox News in a week. But the reality is people are saying, well, we're, we're gonna have a recession now in 2024, or we're gonna have a recession in late 2024 into 2025. Nobody knows. 
you as a day trader, you as an options trader, you as an individual trader should not be worried about where we're gonna be six months from now or 12 months from now. You should worry about making money right now today. That's all that you should worry about, or this week, because no one can really predict whether or not we're gonna go into recession or not. And it's very difficult to predict where we're gonna be long, long term out. So the best thing you can do is again, get the fast moves. One of the reasons why I like shorting is because the fast moves mean I can make money fast and then I can also be out. So if something affects my trade that could move against my trade, that could affect my trade in a negative direction, I don't have to worry about it because we're running out of the trade and I already made the money. So consistency is the main objective or should be your main objective if you wanna trade for a living. But quite frankly, even if you wanna do it a couple of hours a week, two days a week, one day a week, three days a week, that's it you still have to get serious about it because you're not gonna make money if you're not serious about it. And you have to have a good strategy if you wanna be consistent. So whether you're risking a lot of money or a little bit of money or everything you have, you have to take it seriously because that's the only way that you're gonna make it. There's billions and millions of dollars in the market. Is anybody watch that show Billions? It's back, it's the, ser it's the series finale on Showtime. It just started, I just watched the third episode, I think it was over the weekend. Anyone watching the show Billions? They brought the ax guy back, so I'm hoping that it's a good season because I, I wasn't crazy about last season. But anyways, it's a fun show to watch. It takes place in New York. It's a, it's a scripted drama series, and it kind of reminds you just again about the amount of wealth that's out there and who's trading the market. And again, it's about a hedge fund, okay? So there are hedge fund money is in the market. There are individual traders in the market. There are big banks that invest in the market, companies too. So to say, oh my God, you know, I can't make $1,000 a day, I can't make $1,000 a week, I can't make any money at all, that's just not true. There's billions of dollars in the market. You just have to know how to spot it and find it. And again, for me, it's the in and out quick of it that really counts. So the key to day trading stocks successfully is to trade a system that is reliable and proven. So I started trading in 2008 but I didn't know what I was doing. And then it took me about three years to develop my own system. And now I have been teaching people since I started the stock swoosh, which was in 2012. So I've had the business for 11 years. And again, it's one of these things where I've gotten better over time. I think teaching the class and doing the class myself over and over again actually helps me also remind myself of the information I'm even teaching because I teach the class once a month. So it's a good review for myself to do as well. And then also, you know, me doing it every day, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, being a participant in the market and actually trading in the market so I can feel it and see it and see what's going on. And that makes a big, 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 big difference for me. But again, like I said, I'm mostly short. And again, if anyone has any questions while we're going along, just plop them in the room and I'll see them. But you know, if you're someone that's trading and you don't have a system at all, that's another problem. Because why are you taking the train? You know, you can't take the, you can't say, well, I'm gonna buy Apple because I love it, it's a great company, Apple's never gonna go under. Okay, that's fine, and maybe that's true, Apple is a great company, and they're, they're not gonna go under, but what does it have to do with you making money as a trader? You have to be able to take a position in the stock, whether long or short, and you've gotta get a move in it in your direction within the period of time that you're taking it for profit. If you're doing day trades on margin, you only have between 9.30 and 4. You only got six and a half hours to get it right, that's it. Okay, and if you're in an option, you only got the period of the option. And now I'm doing the weeklies. Okay, you could do two weeks, one month. <laughs> you're gonna pay more money if you do it out past a week. But again, it's all about the precision in the timing and direction and what I call getting the best pick. So for me, it's about the pick, okay? If, if you're trading, for example, not every trade that I take works, okay? Sometimes I take a trade that loses, but more trades that I take work than lose. So every day my goal is to get up and find the best pick because I want to win, okay? So I follow the system to find the best pick. What do I mean by a system? I'm looking at putting the odds in my favor that I can have a higher risk to reward chance of succeeding, knowing full well that some trades I take will lose. If I didn't think any trade that I took would ever lose, then I wouldn't even have any amount of risk in my trades. I'd have risked my whole account every day or in every trade I, t I take, and you can't do that. So ultimately, it's about trying to narrow it down for the best, best pick. I apologize, my 
The Stock Swoosh headquarters is getting a phone call as we're talking right now. I, I apologize right now, but the phone will stop ringing. Sorry about that. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, I'm trying to narrow it down to get the best, best, best pick. And if I can find that pick, I can do that pick as a day train. I can do that pick as an option. Or if you could do that pick even if you want to as a swing trade, for example. Now, for me, I do options and I also do day trades. But I, you know, I could do swing trades if I wanted to. But the problem with swing trades is you essentially have unlimited risk. Because if you take a train and you get in it, say, for example, you want to buy Apple, like I said, for example. If you think Apple is going to go up and it's going to go to 300 someday, you might buy it here today or buy it at 178, for example. And then it may go to 300, but it could take five years, eight years. And the trade may drop all the way down to 150 till it goes to 300. So the reason that I get in and out of options quickly, and the reason I get in and out of day trades quickly, is because I want to make money right now. When you're in long-term swing trades or long-term investments, you have no idea when you're going to exit the trades. Therefore, it's not income generation. There, the phone stopped ringing. Sorry about that. It's, it's not income generation when you're in long-term positions that you're in for so many, so many years. So for me, I'm trying to get in and out quick because I'm trying to build up my account. And then also once you build up your account, you can start taking money out of your account as well. Gosh, I'm so glad the phone stopped ringing. Sorry about that. Anyways, getting back to becoming a successful day trading. It takes more than hard work to become successful as a day trader. And again, the amount of money that you wanna make or risk has to do with how much you're going to put on in the position. Now, when, whether you do an option or a day trade, I always say try to turn it over one to one. So if your goal is, for example, to make $1,000 a day, you need to risk a minimum of $1,000 per trade. So you're trying to turn it over one amount. So if you wanna make $500 a day, you're trying to risk at least $500 in the trade, okay? But getting back to what I was saying, the number one key ingredient to becoming successful as a trader is having a specific system and strategy that can offer you reliable and consistent profits on a regular basis. Trading success and financial success in the market is by pure design. You have to set out in the morning, like I said, to find the best pick. And for me, I do that in the pre-market. So what does it take? It takes having a niche. So I get up early. I get up early. I'm rating my gaps. I'm trying to figure out what to do very, very early. I have it all pre-planned out what I like and what I want to do. For example, on Friday, we shorted Marvell. That trade is in here. We're going to talk about it. We did a put in Marvell and we shorted Marvell as a day trade on margin. I knew I liked the Marvell. I rated the gap. I prepared all before the market even opened and it worked. Okay. If you want to trade like everyone else out there, then your results will be like everyone else, which like I said, many people are back and forth, back and forth, trying to figure out what to do, can make up their mind and they never really get anywhere with trading. You really can have outstanding results because there's so much money in the market, like I just explained. But a lot of people just get so sucked into the money part of it where they are just obsessed, is the best word that I can find, with making the money that they're not focused enough on the information. And then of course they're trading in fear because they've lost, they've lost money trading, they've lost money in the market or they have too much risk on in a trade. And then they make dumb decisions. I mean, there's just no other way to put it. They'll take a trade, they'll kill it, they'll double down, they'll buy the dip or do all kinds of things. If you don't know why you're taking the trade, then you shouldn't do it. And I'd say, wait, wait. So the best thing you could do for yourself is to start taking learning how to trade something seriously. And by learning how to trade, I mean learning how to trade a good system, not learning how to press the buttons, okay? Everybody knows how to press the buttons if you've traded at least even for a week. So it is about, for me, the focus, and specifically the focus on gaps. So if you decide to come and learn my method, I teach a 26-point checklist. I'm looking for 20 points or more. If I find a gap that rates 20 points or more, I'll take it in the direction of the gap. I'm looking to short, I'm looking to short gap downs. Now I will go long gap ups, okay? But I prefer to short. One of the reasons why I prefer to short is because of the fact that short moves happen quick. Short moves happen fast. So I might take a trade like Marvell. We were in and out of it in less than 10 minutes. Less than 10 minutes I was done. It's Friday afternoon, you could be on with your day, okay? And again, you can hold an option if you want to, but even weekly options, in my opinion, are very, very, very fast trades. But it's about the time of the day, focusing on the time of the day, and trying to grab that momentum as quick as you can in and out. 
Now, how am I finding the momentum? How am I spotting the momentum? I'm looking for large institutional money. Gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Marvell is a good example. We're going to look at that chart in a minute. Market's another good example we can look at here in a bit too. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and then you play it. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. Quick, 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 hurry. And you see how you're like, oh my God, the panic, the panic. That's why people sell. That's why people short. That's why things move down faster than they move up. Think about it. There's no panic that comes in, like I said, with the Apple example. There's no emergency that you have to buy Apple. Maybe if it was the earnings tonight or something, or tomorrow, and you want to buy it in the earnings because you think it's higher, which it may not be. It might be lower. But there's no sense of urgency to buy anything at all, including the market. Okay? So again, why I prefer to short. Anyways, getting back to gaps, an action is being forced by participants of the stock, and this is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gold and gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading the side of power and money. And again, you are never going to move a stock. Only big money can move a stock. Big money, big positions, okay? So my system is constantly looking for the large institutional money. That is also the reason why it moves so fast, okay? Because it's like a dump. Like if someone was dumping a million shares, selling it, okay, into the open or whatever, between 9.30 and 10, they're dumping their stock. So for me, I have been focused, particularly, you know, this month of August, watching the tremendous selling that has come into the stock market. Last Thursday, it was Thursday, I think it was the 24th or something, yeah, that was the date, we had a massive red bar in the market and many, many stocks. So the QQQ is in this spot. Selling, 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 selling. We got it. We captured the move. We got the downside move. We were ready in puts and they went. Okay. So again, think about it. Shorting really will give you a niche. Many people don't know how to do it. It's about getting a high win ratio for the trades that you take because again, not everything's going to work. And then you want to have some trades that are really, really big trades that will cover the trades that don't work and your losses. And then you still have good profits after the fact. So again, this is a chart of the overall market here, the QQQs, we're just gonna look at it. I didn't see exactly where we closed today. My guess is we closed similar to where this was. So today we really didn't go anywhere in the market. We're probably gonna wait to go somewhere tomorrow because at 10 a.m. we have a consumer confidence number. We have a big number tomorrow <laughs> that is gonna affect the market. I do not know what the number is and I don't know how the market reacts, okay? But this was the bar that I was talking about right here. So you see this big bar. This is a nice big bearish bar. So I called this to fail because it was a gap up. It was a gap up that sold off and failed. I called that in the trading room. But anyways, it could have worked higher. This could have moved higher. This could have got bought. It could have went up. We, back in here, this is back in July, back in June, back at the end, well, the middle of the summer, I guess it was. The market looked like it was going to continue and make brand new all-time highs any second, any day, soon. Could have done it by the end of the this, this summer, actually. Could have done it by now, but it didn't do it, okay? So again, this would have been a perfect, perfect, perfect place for people to come in and buy the market and support the market. But guess what? It did not happen. It did not happen, and the market sold off. And we captured that move, again, in puts, okay, which is essentially a short, and to the downside, okay? And again, any questions you can feel free to drop it in the room and I will see as we go along. So how do you make good choices? You have to think through your choices. Why do I want to do this? I want to do this because I think it's going to move lower. Why? I want to do this because I think it's gonna move higher. Why? You, you know, you have to make good choices. If you're risking $2,000 on a trade, why? Can you afford to lose the 2,000? Are you going to do five trains that day and risk 2,000 and risk 10 grand? Is that what you want to do? You know, you have to think things through. Some days I call a lot of options trades. Not every day, but some days I do. You may not be able to do them all. And if you do, and they don't all go the day that I call them, do you want to hold all those trades overnight? I always tell people to start slow because it's the options newsletter I have is a very active letter, okay? And not every trade goes the second that I call it. You may have to hold it a day or two. So it's about finding quality trades, 
thinking about what you're doing, making good choices. And for me, it's about using a proven system. But it's the how, what, and when. How do you make money in the market? You have to trade a strategy and a system that's profitable. And you need a strategy. Because if you don't have one, then how are you making trade decisions? Like I said, make good choices. My system looks for gaps, but particularly looking for momentum in the gap to see that the momentum will follow through in the direction of the gap. For example, if the stock gap's down, I'm always looking to short it. If a stock gap's up, I'm rating it to go long. I may or may not go long it. I may or may not short it. I'm not shorting every gap down. I rate it based on my point rating system that tells me that it's going to rate to short or not to short, okay? And I'm looking for 20 points or more. If I don't find one, then I don't do anything. Actually, we didn't do anything today. We did no day trades today. And I did no new options today. And the market went nowhere today, so that was a good decision. So we didn't have any good, you know, earnings gaps or news gaps. And the market was had a sideways day. So I'm always looking for quality. Now, when do I do them? Early in the morning. Early in the morning when they set up and trigger. So for me, I want to make money and I want to make money as quickly as possible so I don't have to worry about the wiggles and jiggles of the market and particularly so I don't have to worry about economic data coming out, the Fed talking, news, a plane crash, somebody saying something that could screw up my train. If you're in out of a train in five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you don't care what happens at 12 o'clock or two o'clock or any of these other time frames. And you can see then how if you hone in on a certain time frame and a certain thing every single day, that you can do it. And again, like I said, if you don't find it, then you don't do it. Now, I'm gonna, this is an options trade that I had called. This was for the week of expiring the 18th. I'm gonna go over the trade here and then I'm gonna go show you the chart. But this was a really nice call. This, ironically, this was not the biggest trade that we had this week. We had a huge week trading options the week of the expiration of the 18th. The market sold off beautifully and we were in trades early and we were ready in trades before the sell off occurred. So if you sign up for the newsletter or want to join, the newsletter comes out usually in the morning. So this was around 10 a.m. I called the Tesla 235 puts that expired on the 18th. I sent this trade out actually on the 15th. So this was tight in the call because it had three days to go. That was it. It was very reasonably priced. And again, we're going to look at Tesla in a minute. 350, which is cheap for something of this, uh, you know, cost. You can take one contract. You could have taken two and spent $700. This is an advanced trader risk. You can take less. You could take more, okay? Risk was 87.50, sold at 20. You could have held this all the way into the last day, which is crazy, but it's true. $41,250 you could have made. This is taking the trade on the 15th. This isn't holding this trade for 10 years. That's a hell of a lot of money to make in a trade, even with this kind of risk. It was a return on investment of 471%. So a lot of times people say, well, I don't have enough money to trade. If you did this trade with three contracts and risk an average of $1,000, you could have made almost five grand. So the reality is, no, you don't have to have a big account to do options at all. You do not need a margin account to do options. And every once in a blue moon, I will call a trade like this. I don't call trades like this every day. I don't even call trades like this every week, but I call enough of them to make it worthwhile to be on my newsletter. This was an awesome call. It's the, my ability to be able to read gaps. So again, take whatever money you have and use it wisely. I always have this with people because they're like, oh my God, I have to trade this thing, that thing, because I have a small account. If you have a small account, people say, well, I'm doing futures right now. Cause, why? Because you get, you get crazy leverage with futures. If you have a small account, it doesn't mean you should be doing futures. That makes no sense. You can't get big enough moves in futures. Like you would never get these kind of moves in futures with this type of accuracy. Stocks have big moves. The market has big moves. You can make a lot of money doing options, but you have to get it right. You have to get number one, the direction right, but you also have to get the timing right because options is about timing. You can do something the same day that it expires and make money if you get the timing right. Now, I don't call them that close. I always give myself the Friday cushion of the expiration, but there are daily options in the cues and the spy now that you could do as what would be effectively like a day trade if I called a put, for example, in the spy. Now let's take a look at this Tuesday the 15th. This feels like a long time ago now as I'm looking here. Okay, here we go. This was Tesla. Oh, I cut this off here, but you can see 
closed here, gap down, we got this drop. I don't know if you can see here right where this was. I, I cut this off here when I was taking a, a copy of the slide, but you can see where the strike was there. So again, we're looking for in a putt, okay, which this is a putt, the gap down fell, closed, gap down again, rallied, closed, gap down again, fell, boom. And again, this is crazy, but she could have held it the last day. That was just a beautiful, 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 beautiful sell-off. We also did, well, I had called this the week before for the expiration of the 18th. I saw Tesla was already falling. I called the 240s. Uh, and it's funny looking at this now, the one on the 235s, which actually, because the cost was less, was actually a better return on investment. But I called Thursday the 10th. I saw the Tesla was falling. Called the trade. This was in the middle of the afternoon, 1.30 up here. Day I sent the trade out was the 10th. This is not all the time that I sent an afternoon trade, but I did. Let's go look at that. The 10th. Oh, here. Closed here, gap down, rallied. This was good timing. So I called it as it was starting to break. I waited. That's why I didn't do it right out of the gate because this rallied first. Then I waited. Then it started to retrace. Then I saw we were going to gap down the next day. Then we did. Then we did. Boom. Yeah, that was the 10th. Anyways, still very, very inexpensive at $4 for one. So you could have bought one. Okay. So if you had bought one contract and spent $400, how much money could you have made? $1,600 with 400 bucks. So again, you know, op trading to options is a way to trade, trade my method without having to have an options account. Uh, this was another one on Tuesday, the 15th, sent out in the morning at 10.09. I think this is the same, close to the same time I sent out the Tesla. Again, this is a QQQ put. Type is down here. This is a letter if you get it, 362 strike. Again, it expired the 18th. This was super duper, super duper, super duper cheap. It was almost unbelievable how cheap it was actually. Cost was 90 cents. Can you take this much volume? Yes, you could take so much volume in these. 9,000 risk, 675. What if you took one? What if you took one contract? Again, you still could have made 650%. This was insane. This was an insane market call to see it would do it. Let's go back and look at the chart here. Uh, the 15th was here. That was the 362s. Closed here. Gap down, fell, dropped. Mm, 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 mm. See it? So again, we were talking about shorting. We were talking about momentum. We were talking about speed. Okay. This is quick. This is fast. This is momentum. Okay. So that was the week expiring the 18th in the market. But how did I know that the queues were gonna fall? Because I rated the gaps and then I played it. You can play it as an option. You can play it as a day trade. You can play it however you wanna play it, however it makes sense to you. This was ridiculously cheap though, but we were in these really, 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 really early. And again, the bias at the day that I called these, okay, the day that this started to go in here, um, you know, again, this is August 15th. We're getting into, it's almost two weeks ago. It was Thursday, this is the 31st. Long story short, you know, this was dirt, 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 dirt cheap because it was before all of this happened, before all of this happened. And actually, you know, people were thinking that the market was higher there. It was just good timing. You know, again, you get the timing right at an option. It makes all the difference in the world, not just the cost that you pay, but then you have some wiggle room where you can make a decision if you want to hold something, get out of something. You didn't have to hold that trade. You could have got out of half of the trade, for example, the first day, the second day. If you take two contracts, get out of one, hold another one. You could chunk it out. Could have done day trades, could have done options. But anyways, if you don't have a consistent strategy to trade, you are looking at that and you are not knowing what to do with it. And even right now, even today, even since Thursday, people have no idea what to do with this market. We fell Friday, bounced, rallied, gapped up today, and didn't go anywhere at all. Are we higher or are we lower? If you don't know what to do, you're thoroughly confused. And again, if you're confused and don't know what to do, the answer is don't trade. I, I had somebody email me the other day that they're losing. I said, well, then stop. Stop trading. Take a break. Don't do anything. Watch. 
you're like if you really don't have a strategy if you really don't know what to do if you're really losing money in the market why are you doing it every day it's the market isn't going anywhere take your time take your time and try to figure it out or come to me and learn because you're just going to keep bleeding money it's like it, it, you're, you're not helping yourself if you're not accepting the reality, which is that you could say it's not it's not a crime if you say, oh, my God, I have no idea what I'm doing. I really don't. I don't get this thing. That's not a crime. And no one should be ashamed of that. Again, it took me three years of my life to figure out what I know now. It sounds like, oh, three years is nothing. It was hell in a hand bucket. Three years was a long time. Trading every day, losing money back and forth. It was, I had no idea when I was going to make it. And I kept going. I lost a lot of money. I didn't, wasn't trading on a demo. I was trading my own live hard-earned cash. And then I was working a full-time job on the side outside of that. So it's, you may say, think three years is nothing. No, it was a hell of a three years. It was a long time, you know? So you have to think about what you're doing. And it's no crime to say, I really don't know what I'm doing. And I actually do need help because I don't know what I'm doing and I have to figure it out. I know this isn't easy. That's okay. Sometimes the first step to moving forward to success is realizing that you don't know everything and that you can get help. Any questions here so far? Anyways, there's a lot of money to be made in the market if you know how to train. We talked about that before when I was talking about the TV show Billions. And it's fun and it's fun to think about all the money you can make, but it's not fun losing. Okay. Now, how much do you need? You need to know if you have the money to trade a margin account or if you need to set up an options account. You need to know how many trades you could take a day. You need a plan of action. You need to know what are your goals, how much money do you want to make per week. I already told you, if you want to make $500 a day, you have to minimum be risking $500 per trade or a thousand, okay? And then, of course, you have to know what types of trades you can do, whether you can do margin trades or options trades. Now, there's something called prop accounts where you can set up a prop account with less than 25000 and you can day trade on margin. There are many places out there where you can do that. And you can open up an options account anywhere that allows you to open up an options account. Now, one of the reasons that I like to do day trades and I also like to do options is because I get in the quick trades in the day trades in and out sometimes very, very quickly, and I can be more nimble. When I'm doing an option, I am tend to hold options a wee bit longer for sure than I ever do my day trades. Now, those particular days that I just told you about, the 16th, the 15th and the 16th, when we were short, we also did the market. So this was on the 16th. I know this is really, really small, but this is the QQQs. Remember, this was the 15th, where I showed you call the options, call the puts. Then we got down the next day. Again, so the original put was more profitable the second day. And then we day traded it. And then we day traded this in the room. And this may look like nothing much at all, but it actually was enough to make money. And again, one of the reasons I like to do day trades is I can be very nimble, nimble in my trades, um, whereas I can't quite be as nimble with options. So the entry for this, and again, if you don't want to take a large position, you could take a small position. You could take 100 shares of the queues. You could take 200 shares, 500 shares. The queues are pricey. If you don't want to day trade the queues, you can buy a put. For example, you could have bought the 365 puts, okay, that expire this day because they have the dailies now. When I did this day trade, if you didn't want to do it a margin. But I did, and I called this trade of the room 365.50. I add it at 85. And then the average price was 365.67, which was a really good price. This had a beautiful drop. Again, I'm trying to pull a dollar out of it, a dollar or more, and I got it. So again, this doesn't look like much, but it actually was a really, really nice day trade. And we were ready in the puts, okay? So you could have done the put here and held it, got out, boom. Could have done the put here, you could have held it. Why? It wasn't doing anything wrong. It was ready going it was fine okay and then we did the day trade then i also did we were talking about the 15th uh, we did the spy again if you do not want to do this on margin this was a day trade in the room 446.05 i added at 445.16 my average price was 445.82 this was a huge trade now if you didn't want to do this because this is expensive you could have bought puts okay 
again, I do puts in the SPY too, but you could have done this day trade as a put that expired on the 15th is what I'm saying. Here was the 15th. We shorted this as a day trade. Closed here, gap down, dropped, boom, fell, out, done. So again, as I was saying, this is something new since the beginning of the year where they have daily expirations. This was a trade on margin. You could take 100 shares of this. You don't have to take this size, but it is very expensive to do the ETFs of the market right now because of the cost of them as a margin trades. So I get it. But it was very, very profitable, okay? So again, you know, it's how you want to do it if you're in the room and I'm calling the trade. Now, this whole time I've been talking about shorting because of the whole idea of panic and getting fast trades. But again, going back to what I was saying about Apple, there's no sense of urgency in buying Apple at all. It's like, you know, you're like, okay, well, maybe I'll buy it. Maybe I'll buy it today. Maybe I'll buy it next year. But if you're in a stock and it's dropping and it's falling off a cliff, well, that's a different story. Then you might actually have some panic involved. And so again, what are you doing? You're shorting, you're shorting, okay, to get the drop when you're, when you're taking the position. And again, you can buy a put and sell the put, or you can short it as a day trade. But everything that I'm doing, I'm looking at power of money. Power of money in the market is created by institutions who set the tone for stocks move in the day. The day, like last Thursday, again, great example, the market sold off like a hot cake. It just did. They had a huge, massive red bar. And if you become a special, like you wouldn't, you wouldn't make any money if you were long Thursday. You had to be short. And if you weren't, you missed out. If you become a specialist in defining what institutions are buying or selling, you will have a huge advantage in your trading. And again, many day traders prefer, for some reason, I do not know, they prefer to go long. It sounds like something that, I don't know, makes more sense to people, but the fact is shorting makes huge sense. It makes just as much sense as going long. I just choose to short because it goes, the trades go faster and also because I have an inch doing it. But I will go long. I'll make money going long. You can make money doing both directions. But I'm telling you that you get a niche if you learn how to short as a retail trader, as one individual, because you're not running a hedge fund because many day traders do not know how to short or they're not good at shorting. They're not experts in shorting or buying puts. And we're buying a crazy amount of puts this year. I mean, I, I, I will go long. <laughs> I consider going long to video, but I didn't do it. I'm glad. NVIDIA gapped up in the earnings and failed. NVIDIA failed today, actually. So power and money sets the trend, makes the trend, and changes the trend in charts. If you're not trading the side of power and money in the market, you'll have a hard time seeing lasting and consistent success in your trading because you're going to be trading for scraps. You're going to be basically scalping 10 pennies here, 5 pennies here, 20 cents there. And again, you're going to lose in some trades. So then you're never going to really get ahead. You're never really going to get ahead that you can get serious about doing it where you could feel like you could rely on this as something that could be your income or it could be something you do on the side on retirement. You know, I have people in the room, they're retired, but they're trading. They still have money coming in in retirement, which is great right now because Social Security doesn't pay hardly anything at all. It's people cannot s subsist anymore just on Social Security alone. They need their retirement accounts. They need part-time jobs. And trading is a way to make money. Anyways, institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all time, even if you think it's not. It is. So Tesla, we are waiting. I did not look and see where this closed today. If anyone will let, let me know where it closes, you can. <coughs> this was today. So Tesla gapped up today, fell, fell with the market. Again, I didn't look at what time this closed. I clipped this here. It looks like it was 3.30 in the afternoon. So this closed red, I'm sure it closed red wherever it closed red, we'll see where it goes tomorrow. Institutional money has been selling, selling Tesla, shorting Tesla. They haven't been buying it, okay? Again, could I one day go long this? Yes, but not right here, okay? Not right here, not right this second. Any questions as I'm going along here? Luckily, the phone didn't ring anymore. <laughs> I smell like I was screaming above the phone. Anyways, getting back to being a day trader, you have to win more than you lose in this business. It's the only way to move ahead. It's the only way to consistently make profits. And guess what? You got to have some big ones like the ones we had the week of the 18th. You got to have some biggies. 
You have to win more than you lose, and you gotta have big ones. And how do I do it? I use my rating system. Again, this is not rocket science. It's just that you don't know unless you do my class what I'm looking for. So, you know, the genius of my system is that I'm figuring it out and predicting where a stock in the market's gonna go way before the stock even opens. I'm not predicting the gap. I'm predicting where it's gonna go after 9.30 Eastern time. Why? I'm seeing the gap in the morning, or I'm seeing the gap at night. We're probably not gapping at all tonight because the market really went nowhere. But there are, we'll probably will gap somewhere tomorrow morning. We could be up, we could be down. We could be up and fail, we could be up and rally, we could be down and fail, we could be down and drop. I don't know until I see the gap. But the genius of my system is I can see the gap in the morning in the pre-market and read it and then make the prediction to take a trade. But I'm still not taking a trade until after 9.30. I do not trade in the pre-market. That's when I'm doing the work. <laughs> Makes sense. Now, I'm measuring gaps by rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have, number one, high probability of directional bias for the entire day, hopefully. Marvell fell all day. Again, we're going to go over that trade. It had a big move. It fell all day. It had the early confirmation. I'm looking for early confirmation between 9.30 and 10, preferably. And then precise entries with follow-through and a good risk-to-reward target potential because I'm always trying to make as much money as I possibly can with the money that I'm making. Now, I could have held Marvell longer. I didn't. I wanted to get out quick. It was a Friday. I did not know what the market was going to do because the Fed was talking. So I wanted to get out before then. But I could have made more. There, every once in a while, we'll have a lower the day exit in a short, but not all the time. I'm trying to get the momentum, though. It's consistent trade selection, correct trade selection, correct decisions, make good decisions. It's like if someone said to me, I live in New York City, I live in Manhattan. If someone said, Melissa, do you want to take a, you know, get on the train at two o'clock in the morning, you know, and go downtown or uptown or anywhere at all in the city? I'd say, are you kidding me? I wouldn't do that even if I was carrying mace and no money whatsoever at all. I wouldn't do it. That would be a bad decision. Okay. So the whole idea is you want to make good decisions. You know, don't put yourself in a predicament where you're making bad decisions. Everybody here is an adult, you know. Once you get past a certain age, whatever it is, 21, you know, whatever, <coughs> as you get older, you learn through life experiences. But the older we get, we should be making good decisions. You should be making better decisions about trading right now than you did six months ago. You should be making better decisions about your money right now than you did a year ago. And come, you know, October 2023, two months from now, you should be making better decisions about your trades and better decisions about money. It's the idea of progress, climbing up the mountain, getting somewhere, evolving, getting smarter about all the things that you're seeing in the market and seeing in life. Don't continue to make the same mistakes. But the problem is people get in these, if you just see my, my arrow here, people get in like a, like a hurricane almost, and it's in their mind. They just go round and round, and it spins round and round, and then they, the hurricane just keeps going, and people never get out of the hurricane. So again, you know, your mind can really warp your whole progress if you're seeing things in a very, very negative light. You can get out of the habits that you're, that you're doing, like making poor choices. If you know you're making poor choices, you can change that habit and you can start to make better choices. If, you, if you're in denial that you're making poor choices, well, that's, that's a whole nother thing. I mean, that's like, and there's people that are, you know, and they just keep losing and they're in total denial that what they're doing isn't working. They say, this is gonna work, this is gonna work. Didn't work the last 365 days, but it's gonna work tomorrow. Okay. You see, you know, being in denial isn't helping you either. But making money trading is about correct trade selection. It's about getting the directional bias consistently right to know what direction to take the trade. Now, why is it sometimes difficult for people? Because they can't see it. They don't see it. People never saw in a million years we were going to fall on Thursday. But again, they're looking at the wrong stuff. Trading successfully means focusing on taking trades with institutions. And being on the side of institutions will increase your odds to make profits. Because institutions make stock trends and move the market. And institutions move stocks either up or down. That's the only two directions you got. You can go up, you can go down. And the key is to be with that movement. It's buying or selling. If you're trading with institutions, not only are you on the side of momentum, you're also guaranteed to get 
the a big move because you usually take you know volume large positions which is good and then of course you want the speed we want big ones fast ones okay and then it's up to you whether you want to hold it or get out quickly again my rating system looks at 26 points in the daily chart of a stock the rating system is a checklist the checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock to read the correct direction and it tells you where the money's flowing is it moving this stock up is it moving this stock down and why does it matter because you're in, if you're in the wrong direction you're not going to make money you just won't and and again many people don't know what to look for to predict where that's going so what do you need to make trading work number one a strategy this was the marvell this was the marvell that we did on friday so stock close here gap down boom this was the 25th we shorted it we got in we got out we also did a put it was a good little put you could have got in and out boom you could still be in it i'm not because i wanted to book some money on friday but you could still be in this put actually so we shorted it here as a day trade at 54.10 boom try to pull a dollar out of it that was my go exit at 53.20 it kept going made 22.50 going back to this you see where this went take it over this came down to 52. so i could have held it for another dollar <laughs> i wanted to get out before the fed talked at 10. so that's why i didn't hold that but that was a nice trade and again that was a short that also was a gap on earnings okay so how did i know marvell would fall because I got up in the morning early and I rated it. So you need a system. And you need a system to follow with rules, okay? Rules mean rules. You're not making up as you go along. Again, that's another problem people have. What are my rules? Again, I created the rules, but I still have to follow them. If I can't follow the rules I set for myself, what's the point? I make the rules. I set the rules and I follow my own rules and I'm okay with that. I only trade gaps that meet the criteria 20 points or more. If there's none, I don't trade. I didn't trade today. I did nothing. Take the gap in the direction of the gap, long or short, if it meets the criteria in my system and no deviation. Like I said, I did not do anything today. Follow the rules. Not all gaps are good. They must meet the criteria. That's the, again, what I'm always focused on trying to find. So here was the one minute on Marvell. You also need a method and a structure to enter the trade. Like, where are you getting in? Where are you getting out? Stock close here, gap down. We got in, and I got out of this pretty quickly into this drop in here. Now, like I said, down in here, it fell, fell, fell into the afternoon, into the early afternoon. I did not hold it. But this is a one-minute chart. So you also need a method and structure to enter the pick and exit the pick. And then, of course, you have to size yourself right, too. But the time of the day is just such a big factor for me, particularly for the day trades. And, and again, I like to short. But number four, what else do you need to be successful? you got to have goals. You can't say, well, whatever I make today, whatever I make tomorrow. No, you have to have goals. My goal is this much per week. I think making weekly goals is good because, like I said, today I didn't trade. So I'm not going to try to make double tomorrow. I say this is how much I want to make a week. I might do two trades tomorrow. Might do two Wednesday. <coughs> might do one tomorrow that's huge. So you have an average goal per week. It's called a risk unit. Should be based on the size of your account. Your risk on every trade should be the same or close to the same. And that's the case whether you do an option or whether you do a day trade. Now, I risk more on my options, but you could risk the same on both. But again, I also use stops or limit order stops on my day trades. Because if you don't have a stop in, you essentially have unlimited risk. For me, though, it's always trying to stick with one thing. We did Marvell puts. We shorted Marvell as a day trade. Okay. <clears throat> so again, some days you will not do any trades. I told you I didn't today. Didn't meet nothing met my criteria. But it's better than losing. You have to know when to step back. It's not going to kill you if you don't take a trade one day. Because trust me, I've been doing this long enough that the next day you may have a big one. You're going to dig yourself a hole if you start to trade things that don't work and don't make sense. Chomping at the bit. Today was not a day to do anything in the market. The market didn't go anywhere and there wasn't any specific things to do. If you rely on the system and you believe in the system and you have conviction in the system and understand it, the system will tell you what to do. The system will tell you when you can trade or when you cannot trade. 
So again, I always get this question, how much money can you make? People always think this idea of making, you know, $1,000 a day is like their dream amount of money. You know, you should have bigger goals in this, to be honest with you. $1,000 a day really isn't that much when you look at the way I'm calling some of these trades. It's just, if you're not making any money at all, this seems like an insane amount of money because you've been losing for umpteen years. So you don't have to run out and make $1,000 a day right away. Just start being consistently profitable, even if you have a small account. 200, 200, 200, 200. $250 a day, 200, 200, whatever. You make $1,000 a week for a month and you've got four grand. <coughs> and last month you might've lost four grand or made nothing, break even. So again, it's the consistently, the consistency that people lack. And sometimes I think people just don't even have big enough goals. It's, you can have big goals. But until you understand what to do, you're not going to make any goals. You're not going to make $1,000 a day. You're not going to make $1,000 a week. And you're not going to make $1,000 a month. So until you know what to do, it doesn't even matter. Do you know what I'm saying? That money will come once you understand what to do. It's all the money in the world is there once you understand what to do. But like I was saying, for me, that morning time period is so key. And it's the prep work in the morning. It's seeing it out of the gate. And, it, and, and it's doing it. I, I have Marvell here. This isn't actually Marvell. This is DKS. I want to show you another trade that we did here. Again, taking trades quick in and out. This was another one. This is DKS. We did this the day before. Stock close here, gap down. We shorted it. I did not do a put in this. I actually don't even know what the volume was in the puts in this, but I didn't anticipate this to go as big as it did. So I did not do an option in this, but you could have. If there was volume in this options chain, it was Dick Sporting Goods. This was an earnings gap and it collapsed. I didn't do an option in it. I did a day trade in it. It was a great trade. But again, if you're in the room and you don't want to do a day trade, you could do an option in it, even if I don't call it. So, you know, what, what are we going to get tomorrow? What are we going to get this week? I don't know. We're at the end of earnings season. There's lots and lots of retailers out. Stores that report, I think BBY is tomorrow morning for one thing. I don't enter anything until after I see it <laughs> and I have to get the setup and I also have to get the gap rating. Any questions here as I'm going along? Any questions, any comments from anyone? I do see some new people. Now what helps with successful profits? Money management, like I said, you have to assess your risk. You have to use stops and don't be afraid to take a stop. I mean, if you take a stop, what's going to happen? You'll lose. You could take another trade. No one says you only have to take one trade a day. You could take two trades a day. Sometimes I do a retake. I take a trade to get stopped, then I take it again. Okay? That's better than letting your account just run amok. And then you have all this huge loss, and then it takes you four trades to come back to break even. So, I use stops. In fact, I've always used stops since I've started trading. And if I'm in a day trade and I'm not up and I didn't get out and I'm down but not stopped out, I'll kill it with the loss before four o'clock. I don't hold it over a night into a swing trade, just so you know. Anyways, be deliberate in your trading choices. I'm very much like this. If you've ever heard me trade, if you've ever listened to my trading videos on YouTube, which I put up sometimes a room up there, if you've ever been in the room, you know I'm very uh, uh, uh. I either love it or I hate it, or I do it or I don't. That's that conviction. It's my personality. It's me wanting to risk my own money or saying, no, this is not worth it. I don't want to do this. This is stupid. And again, why we didn't do anything today? Didn't like anything. Thought the market was gapping up and could fail. I was right. Did we fall off a cliff today though? No. So it was, you know, there was nothing to do today. Proper education helps you. If you don't have the proper education, you're not going to do well. And, and the problem is, again, many people have been trying to trade for years and they just don't know what to do and they're taking classes and they haven't made money and so they feel like nothing's going to work. But that's simply not true. Um, you know, I tell this story all the time because I moved. It's crazy. I, I moved almost a year ago. It's almost a year I've been here. I looked at so many apartments. I started, I was like a realtor. I was better than the realtors, actually. I was literally, you know, like going to these apartments and... I knew more about these apartments than the real estate agents did. <laughs> I mean, 
I had seen so many apartments and had studied so much real estate and looked at so many different buildings, but the time I found the place I'm in right now, you know, again, I could have very, 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 very easily just given up and said, I'm never gonna find a place, this is crazy, I've seen so many places, I've been looking for so long, I'm never gonna find it, but I didn't. So if that's you, if you're like, oh my God, I'm never gonna learn anything, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna get a system that works, I've done so many classes, I've spent so much money, it's never gonna come together, that type of negative thinking, you're just working against yourself. You already have a problem with other people in the market that are working against you that want your money. If you're going to work against yourself and strangers are going to work against yourself, then who is working for you? No one. And other people are perfectly happy to take your money that are trading. Does this make sense? So think about what I'm saying. You know, you have to be your own best advocate. You have to be your own cheerleader. You know, when I was out with these real estate agents, I mean, they just wanted to sell me an apartment, every one that I went. And what was so funny is many of them didn't even know anything about the building, didn't even know anything about the apartments, didn't know the fees, didn't know this, didn't know that. You know, I mean, they, they were really not qualified to even be selling apartments. <sighs> any questions, any comments? I am talking about my apartment. I am sitting here right now and I am watching uh, the red-tailed hawk fly right in front of me as I'm talking to you. And you know, I think I, I for those of you who've been following me, I put pictures of this hawk. He's, he lives on the top of my roof and he is flying right over me now as I'm talking. It is beautiful. He is huge. You know, it's, I never thought I was a nature person until I moved where I moved. I mean, sometimes life can really, really, really surprise you. And you know how I can tell it's the hawk versus other birds because they just glide. The hawks don't flap, flap, flap their wings. They just circle, 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 glide. So he is looking for his dinner right now as I'm talking to you. Um, does the training help the newbie set up the account correct amount? Correct amount, what do you mean correct amount? Do you mean how much you should be risking per train or what do you mean? Well, if you don't mean how much to risk per trade, I don't know what you mean. But if that's what you mean, if you come to me and say, Melissa, I have $10,000 in an account, I'm going to use your system to do options. How much do you think I should risk per trade or per day, Melissa, I would say no the more than $500 in a position at one time. And if you want to do two at once, maybe 250. And I would say if you want to do four trades at 250 a piece or two trades at $500 a piece, I would say that's a lot. That's a lot, but you could do it. And that would probably be the maximum. If that gives you some kind of an idea. Now, if you are someone that has a margin account at a prop place, they'll give you 10 to 1 margin with 10,000, you'd have 100,000 in buying power. Again, similar, I would say no more than 500 in the day trades per day, and you could do two at the max, but you're not gonna need two trades a day. Like we did Marvell, that was it, we were done. So again, even if you said, I will allow myself two trades a day, it doesn't mean you're gonna use two trades a day. Like, so if I take a trade, I make money, I'm done, I'm out. I'm finished. I don't trade, 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 trade. Do you know what I mean? So if you make the allotment and you set your maximums limits, but it doesn't mean you're sucking it all up every day. If your job is to trade and your job is to make $300 a day or $400 a day or $500 a day, as soon as you have fixed that job and you've accomplished that job, then you are, then you're done. You're shutting it down. You're not just going to keep trading, trading, trading all day. Make sense? So getting back to what I was saying, create a plan. What if you're like, well, I can't risk the amount I want to make the amount I want. Okay, so then, then what are you gonna do, give up? That's crazy. Get to the next point. Get Everybody wants more than they have. <laughs> Everyone wants more than they have. Trust me, I live in New York City. It's like every, there's always something else. There's always something more. 
It's just, there's always something bigger, okay? I get it, I get it, but you have to say, I'm happy where I'm at. This is fun, this is enjoyable. I feel like I'm making some progress. I actually feel like this has been worth all the years that I've been trying to do this thing. Like, I actually feel like I might get somewhere with this now, like, yay, you know? And you're starting to feel good about it. Sometimes that's just as important as the money. You know, I mean, it's just, it's the learning process. It's the, the enjoyment of the process of learning. And sometimes that's, that's as, as enjoyable as anything else. You know, it's like when you have a project that you have to take on and you know it's going to be a lot of work and it's going to cost a lot of money and you know that going into it and there's no way to accomplish that goal until you do it, you've got two choices. You can bitch and complain and whine about doing all the work and everything you have to do. Or you can say, I'm going to enjoy this process and I'm going to be better off for it. I'm going to throw myself into this thing and I'm going to make it as enjoyable as I can. You know, make the learning enjoyable. The, the hard work, the tough work. I'm trying to think of an example of something, you know, like to even give an example, like a, another story that I could think of. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying here, the Golden Gap course teaches us one solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the side of power and charts. The course teaches how to read support and resistance to take profits in the right direction. The course teaches a more proficient and advanced way to read charts focusing on technical analysis and gaps. And the course teaches how to get conviction in your trading in the market as a source of wealth by trading with the side of power for consistent profit. Actually, I am going to use because I just saw the hawk. He disappeared. I think he went up on the roof. When I saw him, this was two weeks ago. It was on a Tuesday night because the weather was it's gotten a little bit colder now. He dive bombed down. It was around this time of the night, actually. He dive bombed down straight off the roof, just, and I ran up to the window. I watched him basically plummet into a tree. He went there to eat something. He dove off the, uh, hawks have sight, like, I don't know, they can see, like, I don't know how many hundred yards they can see. So they can see their food that they're gonna go get. He dive bombed down off of it, right into the tree to get whatever he was going to eat. That's how you have to be to get a trade. <laughs> you know, you can't be like, maybe it's a meh. You have to be like, like that. Again, that doesn't mean full throttle with risk. It means you believe 100% that you're gonna catch that rat and you're gonna devour that rat. And for you, it's grabbing the trade momentum, taking the position before the big move comes in and devouring it and getting the money and capturing it before it's gone, before the rat runs off in another branch and he's gone and you don't have dinner that night. And that's like how you have to be with trades. You know, it's, it's you have limited time. You only have six and a half hours and you only have five days a week, okay? So you have to dive bomb down off the roof like the hawk. No ifs, ands, or buts. And if you're honest with yourself and you think about yourself, the last time you took a trade like that where you had 100% conviction in it and you thought, this is going to work 100%. When was the last time you thought that? That's how I trade every day. How do I get myself to that place in my head to act like that with my body and take the trade and take the risk and think like that? I've been doing this a long time. I, I've been doing this a long time. So again, you have to train yourself to do it. You have to train yourself to think like that and act like that and it's it's no hesitation because again if you have hesitation if you're like eh, mm, 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 you know then then you're then then it's gone then Marvell drops you're getting a terrible exit a terrible entry you know 80 percent of the move is over you're scalping it if you're think 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 you know you're unsure of yourself you don't know what to do that's how a lot of people train they don't even take trades till after 10 a.m Anyways, you have to start somewhere. So get a plan of action in place. Yes, it should be based on the size of your account, but that's okay. That's like anyone. You have to start somewhere. You have to be consistently profitable as a trader if you want to make it. And if you're not consistently profitable, you do not have the right plan of action in place. You have to make $1,000 a month before you can make $2,000 a month. You have to make $3,000 a month before you can make six, and so on and so forth, and so on and so forth. So trading isn't winning the lottery. You have to be very, very focused on what you're doing. Take it, get in, get out. Again, the hawk, the hawk is a good example of that, how he just dove right down to get that. 
I, I don't know if he was getting a rat or if he was getting a squirrel. And sometimes they actually end up eating pigeons. But he went, he dive bombed down off the roof. And that's how I am in the morning in the one minute chart. Sometimes I'm in something like that. Five minutes, boom, I'm in and out. And that's it, I'm done. And then you have the rest of the day to yourself. But anyways, it's about quality. You cannot lose a lot if you want to make money. It, it doesn't matter how much. Again, it just doesn't even matter. And and I and I use these numbers because people always ask for these numbers. But you know, again, twenty grand a month. Look at today's inflation. Look at how much things cost. If you are buying food, grocery bills have doubled. They're like it's like double. So I mean, what whatever you need to make. To make ends meet now is a hell of a lot more money than it was a year ago or two years ago. So don't put a cap on it. You know, if you said, oh, you know, get it down, learn it, get in a groove with it, get in a pattern, get in a habit, get in, get to be consistent, prove yourself you can do it yeah, and, and do it, okay, with no hesitation, focus on the quality. And then even like days like today, prove to yourself you can not do something one day. Instead of, you know, always feeling like you have to do something because if you don't make $50 today, you won't make your goal. No. If you're wearing stocks that moved and had big moves, you wouldn't have to be chomping at the bit all the time to do stuff on crappy days. If you went long in the market today, you lost. If you shorted the market today, you lost. There was no trade to do today at all. You'll make more on the days when trades are good. The problem is a lot of times people don't, can't, don't even know what a good trade is when they see it, you know? Anyways, put a plan of action in place. Number one, trade only golden gaps. Come, take my class, learn it. Follow the system, follow me in the room. Don't do, any, don't do anything I don't do. If I don't trade, you don't trade. If I take a trade in the room, you're doing it. That's it, boom, as long as you can be there. Get the best entry you can with precision in the morning to get a good risk to reward, one to one. And that's not crazy. That's really not crazy. Create a money management plan for yourself to achieve the amount of money you want. 20 grand a month, 40 grand a month five anything as long as you could say you know what you should do you could say okay i'm gonna take melissa's class i'm gonna start training with her i got four more months left in the year between now and january 1st i want to have this much money you could say i'm not taking any money out of my account at all i'm i want to have this much money in my account of money that i made trading by january 1. you could make like that's a plan right there that's a plan of action you could say and that's a good plan. Maybe you're trying to get up to a margin account size of the 25,000 and you have a small account now and you want to do the margin trades. Anyways, be in the live room because in the live room, I say things that just come out of my mouth. So a week ago, Monday, I said, the market's going to have a big red bar. It's coming. And then it was Thursday. <laughs> I didn't know when we we're going to have it, but I taught I taught the last class that weekend and I saw it in the chart and I said, oh, we're gonna have a big red bar soon, I said. And then I said it in the room on Monday and then we had a Thursday. So I wished it was earlier in the week, but it was Thursday and that was that. But you know, again, it's, it's reading, reading the charts, the technical analysis, getting good at the technical analysis year over year over year. You know, you take my class 10 years from now, you're doing this for 10 years. You're going to be in such a different place. You know, it's so hard for people to fathom and conceive because, because they're like, oh my God, one year, two years, how much it's like, no, I mean, if you've been trading for umpteen years and you're not getting anywhere and you're losing, what's wrong with investing one year of your life or four months of your life or whatever, if you knew that you could achieve your goals and get where you want to be. So if you want to take my class, it's called the Golden Gap Course. The Golden Gap Course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course teaches what direction to play the stock. It also teaches you how to play the stock on the live day and take the entries and exits. The class teaches you how to read institutional positioning and stocks. The Golden Gap Course teaches you how to day trade gaps, and you can also do them as options. My reliability is in the rating system. So most options trades I do call in the pre-market when I'm rating the gaps, but I will call some in the morning and occasionally I'll call a late one like I showed you what we did <coughs> that one afternoon. In fact, on Thursday, I called some late trades. Late meaning not before 9.30 a.m. So, you know, you do them when you get them. 
and how many you do is really up to you. You can give yourself a chance to learn the income you desire, but again, you have to start somewhere because it's really about working smarter, not harder. And again, you can you watch every single video on YouTube and go to every single uh, trading room trial and you know you can do anything in the world and it's just like, what's, where's it gonna get you? If you just dive yourself into it and say, that's it, I wanna do it. I wanna get somewhere, I'm ready, I'm doing it. You're gonna be so much better off and you're gonna get where you wanna be quicker and you're gonna feel better about what you're doing, which of course is, is important, like I said. Um, the, I'm doing a Labor Day special, Troy, that includes the trading room and the options newsletter with the class for Labor Day, which is good till next one week. I'll talk about that at the end. So normally the room is not part of the class, but you do have to take the class to be a room member, but I'm running a Labor Day special which you can take advantage of for one week. Anyways, working smarter, not harder is important. It's like if you said, okay, I'm gonna exercise every day, I only have 30 minutes. Well, if you're trying to lose weight and you wanna do cardio, run for 30 minutes or do weights. You know, you gotta, if you, you're like, oh my God, I only have 30 minutes. You know, you could walk for an hour, but you don't have an hour, run 20 minutes, do weights for 10 minutes, 15 minutes running, 15 minute weights. You'll get, you'll be able to maximize your workout in that 30 minute period if that's all you have to give on a daily basis to exercise. So, you know, you want to try to just think about what you're doing so you can be smarter. So you want 2024 to be a good year for you. And I hate to say it, cause this is crazy considering the fact that I can't even believe it's almost September. I can't believe I'm in my apartment almost a year, but I am. <laughs> so, I mean, start to plan now. You've got to start to plan for 2024 now. People always say, well, what's my learning curve gonna be? Melissa, I don't know, I don't know you. I really don't know you individually. Some of you have talked to before. I, you know, some of some people I don't haven't talked to at all. You know, it's, it's just, it's, here it is, it's summer, it's almost fall, it's gonna be the holidays. Start to plan now. If you are gonna have a learning curve, then get in, start trading. You can trade before the class. You take the class, then you go through your ups and downs in the process this year, 2023, and you get it all down pat and you, you know, you figure it out. Okay. I see what she means here. I'm doing it. I did the class. I have her questions and then you do it. And then you go into 2024 and you're exactly, exactly where you want to be. And, and, and maybe that's what it is. Again, some people pick it up really fast, can pick it up in a week or, 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 or a weekend or a month. But if you don't know how long it's gonna take you to get it, if you don't know your learning curve, you know, I mean, getting prepped and ready to go for 2024 now is not a bad idea. It's really not. So it's about how badly do you want it? I wanted it really badly. I really wanted to change careers. I did not like doing mortgages anymore. I love the idea of making a lot of money in the market. I always knew that I could. Um, and I just didn't know what I was doing when I started and it took me a long time to figure it out, but I'm so glad I did. I just, I was not going to quit till I figured it out. I was not going to quit till I, till I, uh, got it. Um, I knew I wanted to do gaps. I knew I wanted to short. I always had made a lot of money shorting, but I had good trades before I figured it out. I just didn't know why certain trades worked and why other ones didn't. And that was the process for me of the three years of figuring it out in the chart, in the gap. But you know, when I set my mind, I'm a very goal oriented person. I will put my mind on something and I will not get off of it until I've accomplished that thing. It was the same way with me for finding an apartment. And I'm so glad I did. I, I would be stuck in the same place I was living at and miserable, miserable if I was still there, if I was forced to sign another lease and stay instead of finding someplace else because I was, on, I was in a lease and I had a time frame and I had to make a decision and find something. So it, you know, I really, really, really did a great job finding this place. I'm very happy here. It's nature. It's, you know, even just, like I said, finding a different side of myself where I'm really enjoying Central Park. But if you're not ready to really be willing to expand like your horizons about things in life, if you're so clung on to fear, the fear about risking money, the fear about learning something new, the fear about spending money for my class, the fear about risking money in a trade, doing something different, doing something you never did before. You know, options are really, 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 really new for a lot of people, or they're the way that I do options is new for people. Many times I'll take a trade, the trade could be completely down before it's up, and then it could be up and it could be up a lot. That's trading. So, 
You know, the way that I do things sometimes doesn't make sense to people unless you take the class. If you take the class, it all makes perfect sense, which is why I always encourage people to take the class. Some people do, some people don't. You have to take the class to be in the room, but you don't have to take the class to trade options with me. Some people are fine with that. They trade options, they manage the trades. Sometimes people kill trades and then they regret doing it. But I think learning is so important. Again, you're empowering yourself to learn. You're empowering yourself with the information so that no one can ever take it away from me. It's, and no one can ever take it away from you. It's in your head. It's in your brain. Then you know how to do it. So again, the Golden Gap course is a complete system to trade. It's all the pieces of the puzzle that you'd ever need to be able to trade gaps. So this is what I do. And again, we're shorting. We're shorting. We're looking for gaps. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks at our professional bearish gaps. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. So the next class is not for more than a month, September 30th and October 1st. It's 9 to 5. The class is $69.99. Everyone pays the same. If you want to sign up, email me. Now, the Labor Day special is a great deal. Why? Two reasons. One, you can start trading already. You can start getting the trades tomorrow if you sign up today. You can start getting the options trades now. But this special is going on through Labor Day, but you could get in this week. It gives you the trading room free to the end of 2024. That's huge. That's more than a year. It's basically 16 months of the room and the newsletter free with the Golden Gap course combo. What's the combo? It's the Golden Gap course and the trends. So it's September 30th, October 1st, and then October 3rd. This is $74.99, which is a great price with tons and tons of things in here. And you wouldn't even have to pay if you want to stay in the room or get the options until 2025. If you're like doing great and you're like, I love it, I want to stay, you're making money, you renew then in January 2025, that is a long time away. So this is plenty of time for you to learn, plenty of time for you to take your time, and plenty of time for you to not feel rushed. Any questions from anyone? How are we doing? I love what I do. I'm here if you have questions. My email is melissa at the stockswish.com. I will write it in the room. Bob, I see you here. Bob, how are you doing? I have not talked to you for a while. Bob, what's your story? Jeff, how are you doing? Troy, how long have you been following me? If you have any other questions, Troy, you can email me. Jeff's doing okay. No, you've been following me for eight years? No. Are you serious? On and off. That sounds like a lot of people. It was funny. Some guy emailed me the other day. I don't, I don't remember what he emailed me, but he gave me a compliment. He said he loves my emails. And then I looked him up. He's never done the class. And I do creative email. Actually, my assistant does the emails, but I give my assistant a lot of the ideas. Anyways, I try to make the emails fun. Where so many trading educational emails, marketing emails are boring. They're boring, boring, boring. But anyways, um, I looked the guy up. He's been following me for 10 years. 10 years. And he never reached out. Uh, Bob's doing fine. He's still trying. Was happy with my transition to TV. Oh, that's nice. So I'm taping the Fox segment on Thursday at Fox Studios with Charles Payne. It's going to be on live Labor Day. So it's taped show. I always have to be careful what I say so I don't say like it's Thursday. But anyways, I'm sure the general discussion is going to be markets. I love doing TV. And you know what's interesting? So many people have left New York now that I used to do TV with or just gone it's, it's a different, it's a different, different time that we live in. Again, there's many, many things on the internet and I, and I could focus more on my YouTube channel, but I do like doing live TV There's something about it. It's exciting. Bob, you can always email me if you have questions, Bob. 
I think I emailed you, Bob, like two or three weeks ago. I said, send me your phone number, I'll call you. And then you didn't, then you didn't send me your number. You can always email me if you have questions. Always. I'm gonna say something else, I forget. Bob, don't be afraid to email me. Bob's, Bob's doing, doing options. options. So, so we'll, we'll see, see where we, we go, go this week. week. So, so next, next week's Labor Day week, you know, know I, don't I don't know if we go, go anywhere, anywhere next week. week. Again, slow week, week with a holiday. holiday. But, but this week, we have some economic news coming out. We got the consumer confidence number tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And I don't think the market sits on its butt like we did today all week. In fact, let's see. I'm just going to take this off. Let's see how we did close today while we're here. Let me just look at this. Um, 